Hi, I'm Sarah Haran, the Partner Engagement Coordinator at Second Harvest Food Bank of North Central Ohio. The course today is going to be program orientation. This orientation is meant for our new partners, uh, for new staff and volunteers at our existing programs, or if you're a longtime volunteer or staff member running a program with us, maybe it's time for a refresher. So why is orientation important? We really want our partners to understand who Second Harvest Food Bank is, what we do, how we operate in general, the different departments that we have, and we really want to have this video to be kind of a jumping board uh, for a stronger relationship between Second Harvest and our partners. We also want you to understand that we are a partner with all of our partner charities, right? That's why we, we name it that way, our partner charities. We shouldn't look at us as just a vendor for food. Uh, you may have other quote unquote vendors or suppliers for food for your food program, but Second Harvest Food Bank is really here to be a partner with you. We want to work with you, not just be a food provider. So if you have questions about programming, how to improve something, uh, it's your program, you know, that's where we come in. We can have a conversation about it uh, and be able to work together to make that happen. All right, we hope that you enjoy our training today, our program orientation. Before we jump right in, please be sure you check out the Partner Charity Zone where you found this video for important and interesting handouts that you can either view on your computer or print out for reference. I also strongly encourage you to take notes throughout the training so that you can write down specific questions that might come up as you're listening. Lastly, in order to fully complete this class, there is a secondary video specific to the program that you operate, as well as a quiz for each of the videos. The quiz can be found in the YouTube notes below the video for each of the video programs. And once you complete the quiz, we will review it at Second Harvest and either give you a follow-up call if we think you might have some additional questions based on your answers, or we'll send you the certificate of completion. Our program orientation topics include programs that we have at Second Harvest Food Bank, where our food comes from, advocacy, our volunteer relations department, we'll talk about customer service and when and how to order, invoicing, we'll have a couple of compliance reminders and key notes, we'll touch a little bit on pantry track, and then we'll finish off with statistics. Say hello to our program and member services team. We're led by our fearless leader, Samantha Flores. She's our program and member services manager. You can contact Sam specifically if you have questions about our Senior Box program or CSFP, our mobile produce pantries during the summer, or our school pantry programs. That's me there, Sarah Haran, our partner engagement coordinator at Second Harvest. You can contact me specifically if you have any questions about compliance or regu regulations that we must follow, our monitor visits, any required tra trainings for our partners, as well as statistics. And we have Brittany Hopkins, our Programs and Education Coordinator. You can contact Brittany specifically for any pantry track questioning or troubleshooting that you might have, any general support or programming questions for your food program, as well as any sort of data that you might need out of Pantry Track. So who is Second Harvest? Our mission is to grow hope in our region by creating pathways to nutritious food. Our vision is a brighter future for all by cultivating a healthy, hunger-free community. We are the largest social service nonprofit in our region, serving Lorraine, Erie, Huron, and Crawford counties. We are also very proud uh, to be recognized and accredited by national organizations such as Charity Navigator and AIB International, which is a food safety audit that we must complete every two years. That's a very big audit and we're very proud to score uh, high on that audit. Second Harvest is one of 12 regional food banks in the state of Ohio. And again, we serve Lorraine, Erie, Huron, and Crawford counties. 
As you can see in the map, uh, our name of Second Harvest Food Bank of North Central Ohio is very appropriate for the counties that we serve. You might be wondering who is served at regional food banks. Within the 12 food banks in Ohio in the year of 2019, we can see that families received help on average of six times per year. Those families had an average size of three people, about 36% were children, 14% were seniors, and the remainder of that population are adults between the ages of 18 and 59. We served nearly 90,000 unduplicated people within that year within our 12 food banks. 90,000 unduplicated people means that 90 unique people came to our food pantries within the state of Ohio. Now, although Second Harvest Food Bank serves four counties, again, Lorraine, Erie, Huron, and Crawford, it's still important to take a statewide view of how many people we're serving. In the state of Ohio, we also had 198,000 service events. So what that means is specific times people went to a pantry. If my family went to a pantry three times throughout the year, that would count as three service events. We at Second Harvest Food Bank also source food from different sources. We distribute our product to our network of over 100 partner charities, and that includes 160 programs or more. Now, a partner charity is the specific organization that we work with. It might be a nonprofit or it might be a church. Each partner charity might have one or more programs, which is where you get that 160 program number. We also innovate. It's very important to us to uh, keep improving, look at what we can do differently or better so that we can serve our community better. One thing we've started doing quite recently within the past couple of years is a direct distribution. What that means is individuals come straight to one of our Second Harvest run programs. We had been doing this in Lorraine as a mobile pantry, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But that means we have our Second Harvest staff directly distributing, uh, running a pantry out in our community, as opposed to working with our partner charities. Here we'll talk about the different programs we have available at Second Harvest, in addition to our most common programs, such as a food pantry, a hot meal, and a shelter. Now our food pantries do have two different kinds, a traditional pantry, where typically the church or nonprofit organization will pre-pack bags or boxes of food items and distribute that to the community. A choice pantry is where the pantry program is set up as almost like a shopping experience where a community member can come in, get registered, and then shop for their own groceries. The choice pantry is the preferred model. Our mobile pantries. That means a quick style of setup allowing community members to shop and a quick breakdown. There's no on-site food storage with a mobile pantry. We have a couple of mobile pantries with our direct distribution model. That means our second harvest food truck will go out. We will set up different stations of shopping. And then at the end of the pantry, we will put any of the leftover food items onto our truck and bring it back to Second Harvest Food Bank. We also have a mobile produce pantry, which is very similar to the mobile pantry, but there are no shelf stable items. It is only with fresh produce that we receive through the state, through the Agricultural Clearance Program, which we'll talk a bit more about in a second. We also have our school-based pantry, which is a pantry located in a school, or it can be run as a mobile model to serve children and their families. Our Senior Box Program, or formally known as the Commodity Supplemental Food Program, or CSFP, is a monthly box given to income-eligible seniors who are 60 or older, and it's to help supplement their diet with nutritious foods. Our seniors receiving these boxes get them once a month, 
The box comes with about a 30 to 40 pound box of shelf stable goods, along with a two pound block of cheese. And typically we also give away a little box or bag of produce with these monthly senior boxes. Our kids cafe is kind of a hot meal style, but it's really intended to serve children as a part of an after school program uh, or summer programming. In addition, we do have some supplemental programs. What that means is that these programs are not eligible to receive state and federal foods because they're not categorized as emergency feeding programs. Our backpack program is where we will partner directly with a, with a school system or with an organization working with the schools where bags or boxes are packed for children to take home on Fridays so that they have a little bit of extra food on the weekends. Our after school snack is just that. It's a program where if there's uh, a little program after school, the school or organization is able to order food from us to be able to give the kids a little snack before they go home. We also work with a medically challenged program as well as a rehabilitation program. And we do work with a couple of animal rescue organizations and those programs only are allowed to get pet products. Sourcing. Where does our food come from? We partner with the USDA, the Ohio Association of Food Banks, Discounted Product, and we receive donations. The USDA items that we get are through a program called TFAP, or the Emergency Food Assistance Program. We will oftentimes refer to TFAP as the federal funding we receive through USDA. Now this funding is in the means of food, not necessarily dollars. The items on the menu from TFAP are notated as USD, and these items are at no cost to our partners. The Ohio Association of Food Banks offers two separate programs, notated as ACP, or Agricultural Clearance Program, and OFP, or Ohio Food Program, on our shopping list. The Ohio Association of Food Banks is our state program, so we'll refer to that as our state foods that we receive. And we work with them on a regular basis to have food in for our partners at no cost. The donated product we get could be from national manufacturers, local retailers, local food donors, and of course food drives. We also do get individual donations at the food bank directly, which is included in that as well. Donated product on the shopping list is notated as D-O-N. Lastly, we do have purchased product available, notated as P-U-R on the shopping list. And this is where we're able to buy in bulk, so we can purchase you know, pallets and pallets of a certain product, and then we're able to pass those cost savings on to our partner charities. Advocacy. Advocacy is so very important. It's defined as public support for or a recommendation of a particular cause or policy. It's generally acknowledged that hunger is both a violation of human dignity and an obstacle to social, political, and economic progress, and a number of countries have enshrined the right to food in their constitutions. Yet, to date, no country has adopted national legislation to specifically realize this right. I want you to let that sink in. Hunger is not acceptable, and we are here to alleviate it. Now, an important part about advocacy is that if you get an email from someone at Second Harvest asking you to make a phone call, to send an email, or write a letter, those are very important policies that we are fighting for in the fight against hunger. We really appreciate your particip participation in doing those things uh, because those policies help us uh, in our fight against hunger and it allows us to push for those policy changes. Our Volunteer Relations Department typically works with volunteers in our repack room, which we'll talk about in the next slide as well as managing volunteer tasks and responsibilities on site at our direct distributions. 
Introducing our volunteer relations staff, led by Jenny Lynch, our volunteer relations manager, and including Shozo Kawaguchi, our volunteer engagement specialist, and Stephanie Ryan, our volunteer relations specialist. Back in the repack room, Jenny, Shozo, and Stephanie all help our volunteers sort through product. We receive donated products in our warehouse, and that could be the retail donations that we mentioned before, or it could be the individual donations we get at our building. Then our volunteers will go through each item, clean and sanitize each item, and check for dates to make sure that each product is within acceptable expiration date. Rule of thumb for shelf-stable items, we can go a year past the expiration date to consider it safe for human consumption. After the product has been inspected, it gets sorted by type, so that might be a protein, a fruit, a canned vegetable, water, etc. Then those sorted bins get put into individual boxes, those boxes get palletized and get put into our warehouse, and then those boxes go on the shopping list for our partners to order. So when you see donated products such as assorted protein items, that product has gone through our repack room. Now at the food bank, of course our mission is to eliminate food insecurity in our counties. Once products are deemed unfit for human consumption, we then focus our attention on reducing landfill with our garbage. We transfer damaged canned goods and grains to local farmers, and we send our spoiled produce to farmers or compost. We also recycle all of our cardboard, and we are responsible with our over-the-counter medications, or OTCs. We take those to local police departments for incineration and to also avoid leaching into our landfills. Once again, our volunteer relations is open to feedback. Every day, uh, we solicit feedback from our volunteers who are in our buildings, and we also yet ask you, our partner charities, to ask how we can do better for you. A simple example is, at one point in time, we had diapers on our shopping list as simply diapers. Now you may know we have baby diapers and adult diapers. So a daycare program might have been receiving adult diapers, where an adult program might have been receiving baby diapers. With one simple suggestion, we were able to separate those items, and now a daycare program can order baby diapers, and a senior program or adult program can, can order adult diapers. So please, please give us your feedback. We are willing to listen to you, uh, and you can contact Jenny Lynch if you have any of those suggestions. Next, we'll talk about customer service and how and when to place your order. A few quick things about program orders. Each program will have its own login to place orders using our online ordering system called Agency Express. That means if you're a church or an organization that has two separate programs like a pantry and a hot meal, you will have to log in under each program number and, law and order separately. All orders must be submitted two business days before your pickup or delivery by 11 a.m. We'll go over that schedule in just a second. If you have questions about your orders or Agency Express, contact Don Kinsley, our customer service coordinator, at our main line 440-960-2265 and Don is extension 322. We also have specific Agency Express training available on our website in the Partner Charity Zone in the food order section. This is a snapshot of what Agency Express looks like. When you go to look at our shopping list, you can search by item number if you know it, or simply the description. If you're looking for, let's say, apples, you can type in apple and hit the search button, and anything in our inventory that is labeled as apples will show up in the list below. You'll also see how many items you've ordered, your total due, and what the gross weight is. The shopping list is an exact representation of our inventory. It updates every five minutes from our inventory system up to Agency Express, so it's about as accurate as we can get it. Now onto the ordering timeline. 
Again, you have to place your order two business days ahead of time by 11 a.m. So if we look at the top row, where in the last column your pickup or delivery is on Wednesday, we need you to place your order by no later than Monday at 11 a.m. After you place your order by Monday at 11 a.m. on Monday, our warehouse picks the order on Tuesday, and then we have it ready for your pickup or delivery on Wednesday, and so forth throughout the rest of the days of the week. Please understand that we are also closed on certain holidays, which does not count as a business day, so you'll have to keep that in mind as you place your orders during those holiday times. You can receive your order in one of two ways. Either come pick it up at Second Harvest Food Bank, or we can deliver it. If you think you'd like to be on the delivery schedule, you can contact Dawn, and she'll see if there's an available spot in the delivery schedule for your location. If you choose to pick up at Second Harvest, please note that we do have an inspection process if you would like us to load your vehicle directly. That means our forklift will load a full pallet into your truck bed or your van. That inspection process is a $5 fee, and you'll get a sticker that goes on that individual vehicle. Those stickers are vehicle specific and may not be moved to another vehicle that you want to have loaded. If we are not able to load your vehicle directly, we will bring the pallet outside next to your vehicle and you'll be responsible for hand loading. Again, the inspection process includes a waiver of liability and indemnity, and this is just to make sure that your vehicle is able to be loaded by our, our forklift. If you are interested in delivery, Please understand that we do have a delivery fee of $30 per delivery per program. That means again, if your organization, let's say, has a pantry and a hot meal, and we deliver both programs in the same day, that's a $30 flat fee for the pantry program and $30 for the hot meal program, for a total of $60 for that day's deliveries. We also have a minimum poundage of 750 pounds per program per delivery for each order. That means your pantry program would have to order at least 750 pounds on that order, and your hot meal program would have to order 750 pounds on that order as well. When you're picking up, think food safety first. If you have any freezer or cooler items, we do require a thermal blanket, which is available on our shopping list for around $42. If you have a very small order of cooler or freezer products, you would be able to use a smaller cooler that you would use to maybe go to the beach. Please just make sure that your cooler and your vehicle are clean for food safety transportation. In addition, if you have an open bed truck or vehicle, we do also require a tarp to make sure that any sort of debris or damage to the product is minimal. Next, we'll talk about invoicing. During the ordering process, you receive three different documents, your agency order, the agency invoice, and a monthly statement. The agency order is what you get when you immediately place your order. It's a PDF to your email. And you'll probably get a copy of this either at pickup or delivery. Please do not use this order form as a number to pay your bill. The agency invoice is the official confirmation of what was on your order and what is owed to Second Harvest. If you would like to pay your invoices as they come in, that's perfectly fine, but you want to make sure you use this invoice document to send us correct payment. The monthly statement is sent every month with a balance owed to Second Harvest, and it will also include your grant balances if applicable. If you would like to pay your bills every month using the statement, that's perfectly fine, but again, please do not use the agency order to send us payment. Use the statement or the invoice to send us a correct payment. Compliance. We do have a set of required training for Second Harvest Food Bank. Orientation is obviously the class we're taking right now, and that is more of a one and done type class. Again, it's for new partners, new staff or volunteers at existing partners, or if you wanted to redo it down the road, you're more than welcome to and share this presentation with your volunteers. 
Once orientation is completed, you'll get your certificate of completion, and that's all you would need to do for orientation. Food safety training is required every three years. We do have an online course for food safety as well, or if someone in your program who's heavily involved in your food program has a ServSafe certificate, we just need a copy of that certificate and completion of our food safety quiz in order to receive confirmation that your food safety is valid. Lastly, we do have civil rights training that needs to be done every single year by all of our programs. Again, there is a video training for civil rights on our website at the Partner Charity Zone. And this training should be done by the person who leads the program at your organization. Occasionally, we do have additional training that needs to be done. If you are a pantry who participates in our mobile produce pantry, we do have an annual training for that program, and we do have an annual training if you participate in our Holiday Cheer Grant Program. We also have training if there are any major changes from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services or Feeding America. Please understand that our contract with TFAP, the USDA, runs through the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. That is a state program and we have to follow their requirements as well. Along with our Feeding America contract, which is where many of our compliance requirements come from, the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services and Feeding America. Also, please understand that many of the regulations that we have to pass on to our programs, many of them don't come from Second Harvest itself. It usually comes from one of these state or Feeding America or federal, federal programs requiring all of these items. On to monitor visits. A monitor visit is typically done before we approve your program as a partner with Second Harvest Food Bank. And after that, if you're a new program, we will follow up with you in six months. If you're a program that's been operating for quite a while, our routine monitor visits happen every two years. The monitor visit is designed to have a conversation with all of our partners to check in to see how your program is going, if you have any questions, and also to make sure that food safety is a priority at your programs. I'll make sure that you have your correct postings, such as the Injustice for All posters you see here. I'll make sure that you're taking your temperatures of all of your storage locations, including the dry storage, refrigerators, and freezers on a weekly basis, and general inspection to make sure this lovely friend here is not cooking meals in your kitchen. A couple of key compliance reminders that apply to most of our programs. For pantries and hot meals, you must serve at least once per month. There are no ex exceptions to this rule. This rule comes to us from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services for any program who receives TFAP funding. Again, that's the Emergency Food Assistance Program, a program through the USDA. And again, that applies to our pantries and our hot meals. In addition, food from Second Harvest can only be used for your designated food program approved by Second Harvest. That means you can't share with other program numbers or organizations, you can't share your food with other programs even within your organization, and you may not use it for any fundraisers. So what that means is if you have a pantry and a hot meal, you can't just place all of your orders under the pantry program and use the pantry inventory to also serve meals, or vice versa. When you place an order for your pantry, it must go to your pantry recipients. Likewise, hot meal orders or a kid's cafe, whatever your program is, has to be used for that designated and approved program through Second Harvest. Another question we get a lot is, are, are our volunteers able to receive food assistance at the pantry or the hot meal? Absolutely yes, but you can't give them any sort of preferential treatment and it should not be seen as any sort of thank you or payment for them volunteering. Your volunteers should go through uh, the regular process of getting signed into pantry track, going through any sort of shopping, uh, just as a regular community member would, and your volunteers should not be getting their food ahead of time before the pantry starts because that would be considered preferential treatment 
and getting first pick at all the items avail available. Records retention. We do have a requirement by the state to keep all of our current records for five years plus the current year. If you have records past five years plus the current year, please shred any sensitive information, but only after the retention period has passed. You don't want to be shredding documents that need to be kept. Those documents might include, if you're a pantry, the client forms and proxy forms. Our senior box programs have applications and proxy forms. All of our programs will have a temperature log, civil rights training records, and monthly statistics reports that should be kept. Now down the road, if you are planning on either closing your program or unfun unfortunately ending your relationship with Second Harvest Food Bank, please notify us immediately and do not get rid of any of your documents. We do need to have these things on record at Second Harvest in case of an audit. And when possible, we do recommend keeping electronic records. Save the trees! But be sure the documents can be accessed by other staff or volunteers if needed. On to Pantry Track. What is Pantry Track? It's a cloud-based online record management system developed by Mid Ohio Food Bank back in 2009. The purpose of the system is to simpl simplify the registration process where pantries can track household information electronically rather than using paper forms and generate reports with detailed real-time data and of course eliminate the paperwork. Again, this online system replaces the paper client forms that we would normally have to use for a pantry. And with a complete set of data, we can be better advocates and better service providers, directing our resources in a targeted way for a greater impact. Now, what does that mean? What PantryTrack helps us see is statistical data where we can answer questions such as, how often do families use our networks or do families come back to the same program? Now, while PantryTrack doesn't allow us to look up individual records and see where that person went, we can see aggregated data. So this is an example here of a chart of one of our organizations where you can see how many times that person visited a, a pantry program here. So how many people visited only one time? More than 800. How many families visited two or three or four times? That number drops significantly. This is what we call a ski slope, which kind of shows a contradiction to what most people think about people who come to pantries. We get a lot of anecdotal feedback that it's always the same people, and as this graph shows, that's not quite the case. Where we see, again, over 100, 100 families visited only one time, and after that, your number of visits drop significantly. Now at the end where you see uh, close to about 200 families visiting more than 20 times, that's what we call generational poverty, where those families are typically needing to constantly visit pantries in order to maintain their livelihood. This is another great example of what Pantry Trek allows us to see. PantryTrack provides us with completely new ways of looking and analyzing at data and the families that we serve. Now recently, we held a pantry at Second Harvest Food Bank. From that distribution, we were able to see addresses of the people who came to our distribution and use a separate piece of software to see where those families live, rather than where they're coming to pick up their food. That red arrow there uh, next to Vermilion, that's Baumhart Road, that's where we are located. All the little blue dots are the different families that visited, visited us that day. So you can see many families came from Lorraine, just east of us, and Vermilion, just west of us, along with Illyria, and some uh, other miscellaneous households that came to us that day. This map is a very important example of why Painter Track helps us. Let's say we see all of those families who came from Lorraine, but we didn't have many programs in Lorraine. We would know that there are a lot of people who live in Lorraine who need assistance, but maybe we don't have the support there that we should. 
So in this case, we know that we have a lot of programs in Lorraine, and those families were able to visit us that day. But if we didn't have programs in an area where we can see a high need, we can contact someone in that area and see if they would be interested in starting a food program in partnership with Second Harvest. Monthly statistics. Our monthly statistics are required by both the Ohio Association of Food Banks and the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. These numbers are very important because they help lawmakers understand the needs of food banks in our area and across the state. It also allows us to gain additional food sources when we're working with the Ohio Association of Food Banks and the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. Statistics are due by the 15th of the month for the previous calendar month of services. For example, if you served in July, we need those records service incidents from July 1st through July 31st, those statistics are due by August 15th. That gives you approximately two weeks at the end of your service period to complete the monthly report. In order to complete the report, you'll go to our website, secondharvestfoodbank.org, and then visit the Partner Charity Zone, as you'll see on the screen. From there, you'll click on Partner Charity Forms, And then you'll click on the correct form that you need to fill out. Now you'll see here, for a pantry, soup kitchen, or shelter, you want to click on the TFAT Monthly Statistics Report. If you run a children's program, such as Kids Cafe, Backpack, or After School Snack, you're going to choose the Child Nutrition Program Monthly Statistics Report. We also have monthly statistics due separately if you run a mobile produce pantry in the summer, which in that case will have a new link on the web page. And we also do have monthly st statistics for our Senior Box program. Once you click on that link, it'll send you to a Google Forms page. The online stats form will ask for general information about your program and of course your service statistics for the month. This is the beginning of the form where it asks you a couple of different questions. After you go through the online Google form and submit your monthly statistics, you'll receive an email with a PDF with this report as an attachment. This is where you should double check that all of your records are correct in what you submitted to us. If something is incorrect, please resubmit your form online and let one of us know in the Program and Member Services Department. This is the record that you need to keep on file for five years plus the current year. If you would like, this to do, like to do this electronically, you can use a flash drive or a computer where more than one staff person has access to these records. As a reminder, please don't forget that to complete this class, you'll need to watch your program-specific orientation video as well as take both quizzes for this video and your specific program video. Once we receive both quizzes returned to our food bank by the online form, we'll review it and we'll contact you to either give you your certificate of completion or follow up with any questions that we might have for you. From all of us at Second Harvest Food Bank, we want you to know that you are appreciated. Thank you so much for everything you do to help feed our neighbors, our friends, and our families. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Hello again, and thank you very much for your time today to learn more about Second Harvest Food Bank of North Central Ohio. From me, Sarah Haran, and the rest of the program and member services team, we hope that you really enjoyed today's training and that you did get a better understanding of how a food bank operates and what our departments do. Please, if you have any questions or feedback about today's training, feel free to contact me personally. My information is at the top of the screen, or you can contact customer service, uh, volunteer relations, or anybody else that we mentioned in today's training. Thank you.